Welcome to a steam plant using a castle steam boiler. This is part five, making a horizontal condenser oil trap. A parcel arrived in the post this morning, and I think this is the copper tube I've been waiting for from Blackgate's engineering, although it does look a bit small. I'll just play past the parcel for a while and unwrap it. Everything from Blackgate's is always very well wrapped. And as I've mentioned before, playing Blackgate's past the parcel means that you always win the prize. Except in this instance, there's something wrong here. I ordered a piece of 16 gauge copper tubing, 9 and 3 quarter inches long and 2 and a half inches OD. OD is short for outside diameter. And the OD of this piece is 1 and a half inches. And it's also 1 foot in length. But never mind, we all make mistakes, said the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush, as the dialect climbed off the dustbin. I'll keep this small piece of copper tubing, because at some stage in the future, I'm sure I can make a chimney out of it. Instead, I'm going to use the larger piece on the left. This piece of copper tubing has an outside diameter of two and a quarter inches, and it will be fine for the job. I need two pieces of brass plate to mount the condenser on the baseboard. I found one in my box of small pieces of brass plate, that was just the width that I required, and I marked the position of it onto another one which I'm going to cut. Once I've cut the other piece of brass to the correct width, I clamped them together using two engineer's clamps and cut them to the correct length. I intend to solder the copper tubing to the pieces that I've just shown, but it wouldn't be good enough to just solder the copper tube onto the brass plate using soft solder, which I intend to use. Instead, I'm going to make two substantial supports from this piece of brass bar which will be both soldered and bolted to the brass plates. Over now to my small box for the lathe and the usual sequence is face across the front. This is speeded up as always just to save time and I'm moving the tool fast as well because the finish in this case is unimportant as these brass parts are going to be soldered to the brass plate and the copper tubing and will be effectively out of sight. In this clip you will notice that I've had to extend my parting tool considerably to get all the way through this piece of metal because of the shape of the piece of high-speed steel that forms the blade. The parting tool is still very strong even at this length, although I would be much more nervous if I was parting off a piece of steel bar of this size. I almost forgot I need a threaded hole through the centre of these pieces. The same sequence as always, centre drill, drill tapping size and then thread the part. Although in this clip I'm not doing the job manually, I have the lathe in back gear and I run the tap in and back out again under power. On the way in, the tap was squeaking a bit. I think probably I should have used some lubricant. No girlfriend jokes at this point. These days, I often get viewers writing in with girlfriend jokes of their own. And sometimes some viewers say, you sounded very upbeat in this episode, what's wrong? The answer to that largely depends on how tired I am when I make the videos. This morning, for instance, on Saturday the 15th of August 2020, it's 12 minutes past 10, and I'm voicing over the video in the editor. I edited it last night, and had a really good night's sleep. Sometimes, though, I get up very early in the morning, and that's usually when I make mistakes because I'm very tired. Before my brain wakes up, I'm sat at a computer, drinking a cup of tea and voicing over at the same time. In this clip, I'm parting off the second disc. When I drilled the hole in the center of the first disc, I went all the way through into an estimate of how deep the second disc was going to be. And with the tap, I threaded the hole a good bit deeper. By the way, the thread is 2BA, just if you're interested. Now I have two quarter inch thick pieces of brass that I'm going to bolt to these side panels. Before I do that though, I need to drill a hole in a certain place on each of the side panels. And I would like this hole to be in the middle, so I'm using a ruler to find the midpoint, and here's a scribed line. I've noticed something really odd. During the COVID-19 lockdown, and even now the lockdown is easing, I've been excessively washing my hands. If you believe in evolution, I'd like to say at this point that I still need a couple of million years to fully evolve, as I'm very hairy. It's just an observation that some people may find useful. This is a close-up shot of my right-hand index finger, and as you can see, my fingers are quite hairy. Either I'm turning into some sort of a werewolf, or it's all the hand-washing that I've been doing that's making my hair regrow. It's a bit of a mystery. Maybe I should start washing my head more frequently. What's this got to do with model engineering? Nothing at all. I just thought that some viewers may find it useful. 
Here are the two pieces of brass clamped together, ready to drill a hole in a certain point on them. After I drilled the hole, I undid the clamp to separate them back to two pieces, and then I deburred every one of the holes, both in the pieces I made in the lathe and the two brass plates. The next part of the job is to round one end of the brass plates. I don't want to do this by drawing round the two pieces of brass bar whilst holding them onto the brass plates, because I need a lip all the way around the edge. For no particular reason, I just think that it looks better that way. This clip shows the pieces of brass bolted to the discs, using two 2BA bolts. Here you should get some idea of what this condenser is going to look like. This is what the end pieces look like, now I've rounded them. Once this condenser is finished, it's going to have some fittings along the top of it, and I will paint the entire thing the same colour as the engine. In the next video, I'll show how I make the fittings for the exhaust inlet and outlet, as well as the tap to drain the condensate. It's very important that the hole of drilling the condenser for the 90 degree steam fitting is perfectly in line with the one on the engine's base. By sighting it up with a ruler, I think I've got somewhere near. I'll show the rest of the job in the next video. For now, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.